New Jersey is a tough town. Each year there's an election. And this year we're going to be doing something that's going to be very exciting for the residents here in New Jersey. We're going to be electing a new governor. In relationship to the fiscal turmoil that's going on in our federal government, the same kind of problems exist here in New Jersey. And in regard to the type of ways in which we're going to be able to accomplish changing that problem, we certainly need to look at leadership that is going to be inspired, committed, and dedicated to doing something to fix the problem. I'm here with former Mayor Steve Lonigan, who is a candidate who has already excited us with the prospects of being a candidate for governor. Mayor Lonigan, thank you very much for coming and being with us. Hey, Herb, thank you, and I appreciate your optimism because you're right, we are going to elect a new governor this year. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that's uh, really the expectations that are necessary, especially in what has happened in the, the, the highlight of change and when we had the change of our new president that has mm -hmm. come into existence. Mm -hmm. The bottom line about what's happening is that there has been a new economy model or a plan for a new economy. Mm -hmm. What do you think basically are the proper recommendations that we should have here in New Jersey? You know, Herb, I'll tell you, being here in Irvington, uh, and I've been in Irvington before, but this is the first time I've, I've been in your city hall and driving through the neighborhoods around here. And what I see here is an, a community that's just ready to explode into economic prosperity. Irvington's had its problems like many of the towns and cities around New Jersey have had over the past several decades. But you can see as you drive into the city that this is, a, this is just a place that's just a purged, poised on, on the edge of, re of ready to explode prosperously and uh, economically. And we need to do that by cutting taxes cutting taxes for the people of Irvington, cutting taxes for the businesses in this city and in the surrounding areas, deregulating and giving the ability to grow this economy. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to do that by more big government programs. I do not support the current so-called economic stimulus package. Um, I support cutting government, giving the people of Irvington the tools they need to succeed. And I intend to do that as governor. So, in essence, you don't see that a spending model is going to be adequate in regard to rejuvenating the fiscal uh, you, you, resurgence. You cannot tax and spend your way to prosperity. Prosperity comes when individuals are allowed to go out and achieve their best potential to build business, to be innovative and creative. That's what will ultimately grow the economy. Um, this economic stimulus package is just a temporary, it's sort of like taking a cortisone shot when you have a bad knee and then going out and playing football on that bad knee. The knee's not going to heal. It's exactly the same thing. Let's look at some of the horrors fiscally that has really accomplished itself to a level that we're certainly embarrassed about. The debacle that came down with the school funding for the constructions, mm -hmm. the reality behind it is that the money was lost. And yeah. now we see that there is some way in which a package has been created does it really seem as if it's fair that we're not even finding out what happened to that lost money? No, it's not. I mean, the state has lost, taxpayers of the state has lost over $2 billion unaccounted for, overrun costs on these projects. Um, cities like Irvington, where money was spent, has been spent on these like, overpriced school projects, and contractors have come in and made a lot of money and then left town with the money. And what's left behind is, is we didn't get our money's worth. And it's just totally unacceptable. And, and we can uh, return New Jersey to what it once was, to what, to what Irvington was only a few years ago in our lifetimes um, when we were one of the lowest tax states in the country. Today, New Jersey is the highest tax state in America. And we're seeing the consequences of that uh, with our failing businesses. As far as home rule is concerned, do you think that the current governor has been really emphasizing the small towns in terms no. of trying to help them build to some, some self-sufficiency? No. Governor Corzine and I differ dr dramatically on this issue. Governor Corzine believes in central planners in Trenton can do a better job of governing our towns than we can. I believe in home rule. I believe in people on the local level right out of this building in Irvington who can do a better job of managing their community if given the tools and the ability to do it than the government in Trenton can. And history's proven that over and over again. Some of the most current issues that have been touching us in terms of the relationship of problems has been the health care issue. Yeah. The problem with health care now seems to focus in terms of charity care. We have a large number of individuals, not only in the urban communities, but even in suburban communities where individual affluent are unable to manage the hospital care or the bills that are accomplished behind it. 
what can really stimulate a better opportunity for us to feel safe when it comes to health care? I grew up in a little town called Ridgefield Park up in Bergen County, a blue collar working community, pretty, pretty uh, ethnically diverse and economically uh, middle income. And I remember when I was a kid, there were like five or six MDs in town that operating out of there, you know, the doctor had the office right in his house, and there were five or six of them. Today there's one. There's one left. Right. We have regulated doctors almost out of existence. We're taxing them out of the state. So what's happening is it's the most simple economic lesson. It's called supply and demand. When you have left, less doctors operating uh, and you have less and more demand, prices go up, services go down, and the, and the market suffers. We need to deregulate the health insurance industry so that we can compete with other states. And let, let me explain, Herb, what that means. New Jersey has the most over-regulated health insurance businesses in the country. They regulate everything health insurance has to provide. For example, if you're an 85-year-old woman who wants to buy health insurance, you have to buy a health insurance policy that provides fertility treatment. <laughs> um, if I go across the street to, or across the river to Pennsylvania. I can buy a health insurance policy for half the price of what I pay in New Jersey because they're so deregulated. We need to deregulate insurance. We need to bring competition to the marketplace. We need to bring more doctors into the state to provide more services and to compete. That's what so will make a difference. So I guess what we're really talking about is the types of compromises that are made in the contracts. Well, what you're talking about is we've moved away towards free market health insurance, towards socialism. We've moved towards socialized medicine. We're seeing a drastic move towards socialized medicine. Socialized medicine has not worked in England. It doesn't work in other countries. That's why people still flock to this state, to this country, despite our problems, because we still have the best health services in the world. Um, and when you go to countries like England, which socialize their, their health insurance, right now people wait eight to 10 months for a CAT scan in England. And that's where CAT scans were invented. And yet in New Jersey, if you need a CAT scan this morning, you can get it done this afternoon. So despite all of our problems, we are still providing the best possible health care. However, what we've allowed to have happen is we have allowed the government to pilfer the unemployment trust fund over the past decade to pay for charity care, which has mainly gone to, gone to charity care for illegal aliens in our hospital system. That's put a dramatic burden on our hospital system. That's one of the, the big problems we're facing. Well, in relationship to solutions, how would you correct that problem if being governor? Well, I'd like to see us cut taxes on upper, middle, middle and upper income people. Most of your doctors coming out of college have an enorm enormous amount of debt. They got to start paying off the debt. They start making money. And we're already taxing them right out of the box. They're leaving the state, especially OBGYNs. So I don't know who's going to be here to deliver babies in a few years. Mm -hmm. We have the worst um, malpractice insurance costs in the, in the country. We have some of the worst uh, tort claims in the country. We need to cap um, malpractice claims. We need to cut taxes. We need to bring more doctors into the state. We have to deregulate insurance. We have to bring back the free market. And when we do that, you'll see physicians starting to open, you know, uh, doctor's offices right here in, in, in their home offices like they used to do, even perhaps making house calls like they did when I was a kid. Well, you know, I mean, again, it really shows that there can be a new way in which we can focus on health care in the manner in which it would be helpful. But Again, still, we have like issues such as HIV in our community is running rampant. It's an epidemic even in as much. And there is going to be a shortage on individuals that can have that kind of care. Do you think that that is going to be the way that it's going to be improved? Well, the HIV issue is obviously a complicated one. It's a social issue. That's going to take a time to address through education of our kids and um, through promoting uh, you know, obviously t the war on drugs and the spread of infected needles and whatnot. So that is a, that's a whole different battle, I believe. Although it relates to the health insurance industry, I understand what you're saying. But again, I, see, I am a firm believer in the innovativeness and ingenuity of Americans and the free market to provide health care if we're given the ability to do it by allowing certain nurses to do certain types of things with patients, for example, uh, or uh, other types of, of medical practices. Well. The expense of it, though, is the reality where I'm getting at there. If we're cutting the uh, charity care, or even in as much, because there are a number of people who have not been able to apply for Medicare, and in relationship to really focusing in on it, a lot of the funding that really comes in goes into those types of accounts. 
if they're going to cut them, how are we going to be able to adequately care for individuals who won't be able to get the proper medical services? You know, this country has always provided a safety net for those who are truly in need. And I think we all recognize that that safety net's not going to go away. No one's going to be allowed to, to die of illness in the streets of Irvington or Bogota or, or, or in any place in the state of New Jersey. We as a people just won't allow it to happen. What we need to do is we need to get the government off the backs of doctors, off the backs of hospitals, so they can do what they do best. The more the government gets involved with their regulations, with their subsidies, with their, uh, with their rules, just makes things worse and worse. 